This is the SteelSeries Aerox 5 Wireless. It's a new addition to the Aerox series of mice. SteelSeries say this mouse is going to be perfect for all fast paced games such as battle royales, first person shooters and MOBAs. I put this mouse through a serious grind to see if it can reach my high standards and if it really is perfect for every type of game. And this isn't just an ordinary mouse, there's a few extra features that aim to put this ahead of the competition. I gave these extra features a really good go as well when trying to incorporate them into my usual gameplay to see if they're a revolutionary addition or if they're just bad. It even has something called Aqua Barrier Protection which I'm certainly going to test. The Aerox 5, unlike the 3, has an ergonomic design and it's also a bit of a unit, not as massive as the Basilisk or G502, but certainly bigger than most ergonomic mice with it being around 129mm long. The shape is actually somewhat more unique for an ergonomic mouse. The curves on this one are less aggressive than most other ergonomic designs. The side-on curvature would be similar to some ambidextrous mice like the Razer Viper V2 Pro, but looking from the front and back, the curve is actually still quite flat for for an ergonomic mouse, so you can see what I mean when I say that the curves are a lot less aggressive. I say that this mouse would be okay for most grip types, especially if you have larger hands. It certainly is a more universally friendly ergonomic mouse, which isn't designed for your hand to really get a full grab onto it. Because of its large size, there's a lot of room for your fingers to sit. However, the buttons do hang over the side, so those that want a little perch for your fingers will be disappointed. There is a bit of a curvature on the left side of the mouse as well, which allows your thumb to nestle in quite nicely. Again though, the curvature here isn't as aggressive as some others and gives a lot of room for those that might have one of those thumbs that look like a toe. Despite its large size, it's actually quite lightweight with it being 74 grams. Not as light as some others, but considering this is a large lad with extra buttons, it's going to be a bit hefty. Naturally, the holes allow for some weight to be shed here. And those that are familiar with gaming mice and holes, this does have quite a lot of them, and the gaps between the holes are actually quite minimal. I'll let you know my thoughts on these later. The holes do extend to the main buttons as well, so those that prefer to have their fingers sit further up might find them a bit in the way. There is some coating on the remaining parts of the mouse, and it is a bit of a coarse texture. If the mouse didn't have holes on them at all, I wouldn't complain about it. The coating is actually quite nice. It's comfortable and grippy. Now, you obviously will be thinking holes, stuff getting inside the holes, such as dirt, water, ketchup, crumbs from the chicken tendies your mum brings you? Well, Steel Series have addressed this with their Acra Barrier Protection, which has an IP rating of 54. So it should resist splashes, dirt, oil, and debris. So what's the best way to test this? I gave it a bit of a splash. Does it live? Well, I'm going to tease you a bit more and you're gonna to have to wait until some other part in the video that you cannot skip to. Now we start moving to the more unique features of the mouse, the buttons. Obviously you get the standard mouse 1 and 2 which are using the same golden micro switches which are on the Pulsefire Haste. In the specifications though it says it's using the Steel Series mechanical switch. So which one is it? Well it's actually the golden micro switches, I don't know why they list the mechanical switch. These are rated for 80 million clicks and as they feature in the Pulsefire Haste that I've used quite a bit, they're personally really good. Now you get the normal side buttons which are easy to reach and there's plenty of thumb space there so they shouldn't be any accidental misclicks. But now we get on to the new stuff. There is a thumb button, however this thumb button is a bit different. I'll give you my personal thoughts on using it later on along with my verdict. But this is a bit more tucked away than some other mice that have thumb buttons though, so this could be a deal breaker for some. But it works, so it's got that going for it. The next new feature is the Guitar Hero Flappy Paddle that sits above the side buttons. This isn't one you press into, you just move up or down, pressing into it does nothing. I have tried to use this often, which again I'll share my thoughts on using it later. In terms of feeling and accessibility, I think it's okay. It has a nice feel to it, very consistent, so it's not like it's just been stuck on as an afterthought. I'd imagine it's meant to be used with your thumb, so it's somewhat easy to reach, but you might have to adjust your grip to really get to it, which might not be ideal. That's pretty much it for the newer features. You do get a DPI button as well. It's, it's really good, it's amazing. It changes through DPIs. The scroll wheel I actually do find is consistent with the mouse three click, and the scroll is nice as well. There's quite a bit of feedback going through the notches, but it's not so bad. I would I'd say that it's stiffer than most scroll wheels I've used in recent memory. In terms of what's powering this mouse, you get the SteelSeries True Move Air sensor. As far as I know, it's just a Pixar 3335 sensor with a bit of modification that SteelSeries have made themselves. 
but you may be wondering if this isn't the top sensor surely it's bad well it's not it won't be on the same level as some of the newer sensors in terms of what it's capable of but for the average user you're not really going to notice it i think the only thing that might be noticeable is there's a brief wake up time and the default liftoff distance is higher than the average mouse for battery life, it is vague. This seems to be an industry standard though. They give a maximum play time of 180 hours. However, this is on Bluetooth, which only supports 125 hertz polling rate. The 2.4 gigahertz time is 80 hours, but they don't say if it's with RGB on or off or what polling rate it's set to. Personally, I've used it for about a week and it's only really gone flat once. The good thing is that it does charge pretty fast, so it's not like you've got to plug it in for hours to wait for it to go back to full. For extras, you get PTFE feet, two large pads on the top and bottom, and a sensor ring as well. These are perfectly fine, and for those that are clueless, these will definitely be a lot smoother than the cheap plastic ones you might already have. There is some software that comes with this that I'll run through briefly. First, it's incredibly cluttered. It wants you to make an account, and then it comes with giveaways, news, this moments things, do clip gameplay stuff, and all that rubbish really is pointless but once you get the actual engine software it's pretty decent everything is clearly laid out you can make the normal changes to dpi profiles and so on so it's good there's also a benefit of having this smart mode illumination which basically turns off the lights when the mouse is moving because they also know that nobody's going to look at their mouse whilst they're playing games once the mouse is stationary the lights come back on again so you can stare at it or whatever people that love rgb do there's an extra type c cable as well in the box as well as a dongle adapter for those that want a little bit more wireless reliability and one thing i will mention is that the packaging is incredibly neat and isn't wasteful there's not much wrapped up in this box so most of it is cardboard and it can be recycled good job guys now it's time for the best part my opinion so let's start off by talking about the use in game i have been on a massive overwatch grind for god knows what reason considering i hated the first one but anyway i have been really enjoying playing with this mouse the shape is honestly really nice i find it comfortable and i've never really had to shift my grip at all i've been also playing dota 2 and path of exile so in all the games that i've played it has done a great job with them all it really is a comfortable mouse for me but i can see the large amount of holes may be getting a bit distracting and as mentioned before there's not a whole lot of room for the main buttons so if you're a claw grip user and don't want to have your fingers on the holes or rubbing against them this might be a bit of an issue and this is probably the first mouse that i've used that have had holes in them that i've actually noticed while playing the extra buttons as well are a bit average the thumb button i think is just too far away so if you use a claw grip or your thumb just isn't long enough you may not reach it at all i mean i can just about reach it and it's not that comfortable because i do have to adjust my grip to actually get to it and based on their own model on their website it looks like with a claw grip you are just out of luck the flappy paddle I think is okay. I don't think it's a complete failure, but I don't think it's a big hit either. If I could change it, I would make the button either have a matte coating instead of glossy, maybe come with grip tapes and at least make it require less force to use. So if I want to use it for something important for a quick flick up or down, it can sometimes be a bit tricky to get some purchase on it. And you don't really want to have to spend a lot of thought on trying to hit it. You just pass your thumb over and it triggers whatever you want. I think it would have been better if it was just easier to trigger. Despite my gripes of it, I can see this maybe being a use feature that I would like to see revisited and maybe more polished. But we're not done with the butts yet. There is a final but, the price. So basing this off the full recommended retail price is around an eye-watering $140 at the time of this review, which is quite steep. I think the troubling part for me personally is that the sensor in this is quite outdated by today's standards, and it puts me in a bit of a conundrum because can I recommend something that in terms of hardware is overpriced? I would personally say no, even though I think this mouse is great, I think that if I had to pay $140 for this, I just wouldn't. I mean, this is the same price as the Death Adder V3 Pro, which is a high tier beast. I think it would depend on the extra buttons and maybe the need for it to be lighter weight as the Logitech G502X Lightspeed and Plus models are around the same price, but sit around about 20 grams heavier. I guess for a mouse that currently fills a gap in the market for multi-button lightweight mice, it's probably the best option at the moment. It is comfortable to use. It has got a lot of features that I guess do require a bit more practical polish to them. It has succeeded in being a mouse that I enjoy playing games with though. I personally say it's best to wait for it to go on sale. I would say that maybe I would pay a maximum of around $100 based on my experience and with the included hardware. And did it survive the little splash? I put way too much water on it so if it doesn't work I won't be surprised. Cool.
It works. It's quite impressive. If you're wanting to look at a multi-button and lightweight mouse, I have one on screen now that you should look at.